Hey, Christy Mattoon here from Mind Rewire. So glad that you're here with me today. I'm starting a new playlist um, because of an event that happened in my life. And I just think it's an important thing to share. So I'm going to try as hard as I can to share um, with tears or without tears. I guess at this point it doesn't matter. I've tried to make this video one time already and um, didn't turn out too well and actually didn't even uh, end up staying on YouTube for whatever reason. It didn't un upload right and it disappeared. So we're going to try it one more time um, and see if I can get it, get it down a little bit better and a little bit easier. What we're talking about today is actually suicide. So from a survivor's standpoint, um, the survivor in this case being me, um, and the standpoint of it was my brother that committed suicide. Um, being a survivor in the aftermath of somebody else's suicide is, um, I don't know for me, I don't even know the right words for it. I don't know what it is, but that's what I want to talk to you about. And that's what, um, hopefully anybody else out there that's struggling with this kind of stuff, well, it will give you some way to help you deal with it and just hearing and seeing what we've gone through and what I specifically has gone through. So this is more about, um, the path I've taken through it than possibly anything else. Uh, but I'll give you as much information as I can about how the family dealt with it and um, even the reasons why um, it happened to start with and um, I don't know, just everything we've noticed since. Um, so um, who I'm talking about here is my little brother. Um, it's my little brother, Kirk. And I'll show you this one also because it's just a favorite picture. This is actually is a picture that was taken on my birthday of this, of this year. Sorry. I didn't mean for that to happen that fast, but I'm just going to keep going because I said through the tears, with them or without them. Um, so my little brother passed on, on July 9th. That picture was actually taken on June 16th, which is my birthday. And um, he took his own life. Um, I would like to say that it was unexpected, but it wasn't a first attempt. Um, it was unexpected in the notion or in the idea that he seemed like he was doing really good. He was doing a lot of right things as far as trying to um, help himself and benefit himself and um, the appearance of being okay. He was looking for a new job. He was trying to situate and stabilize his living situation. Um, he was doing all kinds of stuff, getting out of his scope of normal, going out, meeting new people, doing new things with new people, even re-engaging with family members um, and reaching out in different ways like that. So all kinds of stuff was different. Um, when I heard he had killed himself, my son was actually just coming out of um, a hospital for... Um, suicidal ideation. So we went from kind of a rolling event with with my son, um, who is no stranger to depression and anxiety um, and has a lot of physical, physical issues. Um, and then right into another one with my brother who um, not just attempted suicide, but actually, um, actually committed suicide. So this little segment, this part of this video, this is going to be a whole playlist with information of what we've done, what we noticed, um, what had to happen in the aftermath, how we dealt with it, how I dealt with it specifically, um, things I noticed with family members and the things that, you know, we just all seem to be struggling with. Um, and then, you know, just as I don't know, different things that I, I've noticed and witnessed just because of what's happened. And so just information I want to share about how to get through this kind of thing, literally a survivor's guide. What do you do? How do you handle yourself yourself, and how do you keep going? Um, uh, and especially, you know, knowing what I know and doing what I do, I handle subconscious stress for other people all the time. I help people through situations and issues um, that seem really super tough and, you know, coming from past issues and problems all the time. And um, knowing that he went ahead and committed suicide and even the internal struggle that that's put me in has been a very interesting is the only word I can come up with to talk about it. It's been a very interesting road. Um, 
So I'm actually going to start with a few of the things that people have um, said to me that were helpful. So this first video is about things that um, people said to me or told me that I've actually been able to utilize in the aftermath that were very helpful. So um, I have a lot of friends in the um, psychology community and um, in different regards from energy psychology all the way up to licensed clinical psychologists and psychiatrists. And one of the best pieces of advice somebody gave me was know that you won't find your feet for a long time. <laughs> and I didn't really understand what that mean meant, um, except that I didn't, you know, weeks after, I just didn't feel right. It feels like a part of you is missing. And um, I guess in a sense, and I'll talk about Kirk and my relationship in a little bit, but in a sense, a part of me is missing. And of course, of course, that's his physical nature being here. Um, but a new sense of normal, she said, you won't find that footing. You won't find that stability probably for a year. And it's literally recreating a sense of normalcy for yourself. You can't, you can't have the same sense of normal because it doesn't exist anymore. And it's not something I ever really thought about. Um, one of the things that I'm understanding between somebody dying from a disease or from an accident or from, you know, whatever the thing is versus actually taking their own life, there seems to be a weird division line in the way not only people treat you and look at you, but the way you treat yourself. Um, almost as if you take it on like there's something you should have done, you felt like you could have done, you felt like you should have been there more, all kinds of things you start putting to it. And so being able to keep yourself away from that becomes really important. Recognizing that there's not going to be a new sense of normal for a while helped me a ton um, because what it's allowed me to do is just step day to day. And when the tears come, they come. Um, when people around me get uncomfortable, they're more than welcome to leave the room or I'll leave the room. Um, sometimes they come harder than other times. And I've just gotten to where that's okay. And it's been probably a long time coming that I've allowed myself to cry for many reasons. Um, but this has brought me to a whole new place. Literally, his death changed my life and has allowed me to open up to emotions that I think I lost a long time ago. Um, one of the Another thing that somebody else had said to me was the world doesn't stop with you. It literally feels like when you first hear this kind of news that the world just stops, like it jolts you to a stop. And all you can do is just stand there and I don't even try and process. I think my first initial reaction was because we had just gotten my son home. And the second I heard his name in conjunction with that word, I knew. Um, and I just, I just lost it. You know, I just, I don't know that tears fell for quite a while after that. Um, but then it was, you know, the planning and what do you do next? Because he was in Colorado and we were in California. So it was literally, you know, recognizing the world's not going to stop. Everything keeps going on as normal and you have to kind of find a pace within that sense of whatever normal is. Um, for me, it was literally just sitting down for a while. Um, it's been about a month since I've done anything on on here or anywhere for that matter. I just laid it all down. So getting back into a little bit of a pace um, is becoming really necessary at this point for, for a lot of reasons. But one, just to help reestablish a new sense of normal. Um, another person actually gave me some really good advice um, which I've already talked about is just expect the tears. Just expect them. When they're there, they're there. When they go away, they go away. If you're angry, get angry. If you're sad, get sad. If you're, you know, excited and happy, be excited and happy. And um, always just holding that memory, if it comes in, holding it in a high regard, holding that person in the highest place that you can. And that's really helped me a lot, too, because... Um, we had a lot of turmoil in the after, um, aftermath of his, of his suicide. Um, and I'm not going to go into that right now either. But in that turmoil, it became really, really hard to distinguish what was real and what wasn't real um, through somebody else's pain 
and then what my pain was in regards to all of it. So becoming aware of my own senses um, and just letting the emotions flow became super important. Um, and then one of the things that, you know, on, on the other side of, of all of this, of all the craziness, somebody reminded me, hey, watch for the, watch for the weird things. And I, I tend to be on that side of stuff a little bit, I guess, um, because I do have a sense of feeling and seeing and um, kind of that sixth sense kind of idea, I suppose, that some folks don't. And um, knowing when he comes near, knowing when, I don't know, sometimes you just feel him so close, it's literally just like a bear hug that I just can't even explain. One of the things that happened directly after um, his death, it was the day after, um, I had gotten to Colorado. We were trying to figure out what to do as far as um, their apartment and and all of the things that happened and what do you do next kind of stuff. And I'll be talking about that too in another video. Um, one of the things that happened, I was standing in his room and of course there's nothing left in there because it had all been cleaned out you know, as far as the bed and the carpet and the wall and all this stuff. And um, I, it was like he appeared in front of me. I can't explain it any other way. He physically was not there, but I could sense him. I could feel him. I knew he was standing in front of me. And what he showed me was there was no pain, right? So he was actually showing me the lack of pain that he had inside of his head, inside of his body and um, appeared to be a younger version of him, a um, very healthy version of him that I don't know that I'd ever really even seen before. And um, so physically present and so aware and so, I can't even explain it except what I keep calling it is five seconds of peace. And it was this five seconds of such a deep, deep peace that I felt I can't even, I can't explain it deep enough, except that it doesn't go away. I, it hasn't left, hasn't left me since I, I felt it. Um, and across the room, his salt lamp was actually sitting on this little stack of stuff that they had, when they moved stuff around to take all of the, uh, um, all the items out of there that had been affected by him shooting, shooting himself, um, his salt lamp came on in the middle of all this. And it was just a verification to me that what I was seeing wasn't fake, that what I was feeling was real. And what it was for me was seriously a verification that everything I believe in is so solid. It's not, it's not fake, it's not false, it's not something you make up in your own head. That the spiritual other side of everything became so solid in that moment. Um, and it was solid to me before, so to be able to explain this is really tough. The sense of peace that he left me with um, was absolutely amazing. It was absolutely beyond beyond anything I can describe. My goal for talking about this is literally that it might reach somebody else who needs this information that it might help somebody else get through the trauma that they've had to go through and maybe they haven't been able to clear their system of it yet, that maybe it helps somebody else, um, I don't know, be able to take care of their own, their own problems within, if they're even contemplating something like this. So stay tuned, I'm gonna do more videos, you'll find more things, it'll be underneath the playlist. Um, it'll be titled, Suicide, a Survivor's Guide. Uh, my brother's decision changed my life. And um, so we're going to continue this conversation. Um, blessings and peace on you. Anybody who's out there watching this who has contemplated suicide, please reach out. Please reach out for help. Um, and if you're in the aftermath or you are standing next to somebody who's contemplating it, keep watching for more. Maybe I can give you some ideas or tips or something, not only just for self-care, but that you can help them reach out. Blessings and peace.